Hello everyone and welcome to our discussion on work in process, an extremely important concept as it applies to your fundamental accounting and design manager. Today we'll discuss exactly what work in process represents, how it pertains to your financial statements, and how it specifically functions within design manager. My name is Brad and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. Lastly, if you miss a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, you can go to our help center at knowledge.designmanager.com, click on the webinars menu, and go down to recorded webinars, and you can see any of our recent past discussions. You can also go to our YouTube channel at Design Manager Inc., Design Manager INC, where you can see any of our past or historical webinars and tutorials to review at your leisure. As usual, we'll be using examples in both Design Manager Cloud and Design Manager Pro Cloud. If you'd like to see or refer to uh, one, of the, one platform or the other, again, just ask in the questions frame. Let's begin our discussion by defining the concept of work in process. The work in process account is an asset account. And if we look at our chart of accounts, we can see our work in process account, in this case at 17100, with the rest of the asset accounts at the top of the chart of accounts. Generally, all of your assets are indicated uh, by starting with a one in financial uh, nomenclature. Because it's an asset account, our work in process will be listed on our balance sheet. If we go to reports, under general ledger reports, financial statements, we can see our balance sheet. And for convenience, I've already added our balance sheet to our favorite reports so we can access it easily throughout the demonstration today. We can go ahead and run our balance sheet. And if we make this a bit larger, we can see in our assets area of the document, we can see our work in process account with all of our other asset accounts. Now, unlike income statement accounts, balance sheet accounts do not clear out at the end of the year. So that balance in our work in process maintains from one year to the next. How do we define our work in process account? Well, we have it at 17100 for our demonstration today, but you may want to define it or customize your charter accounts, and you can certainly do so. That's done under File, Company Settings. On the Company Information window, we have our Other Accounts tab, where we have very specialized accounts in Design Manager that have very specific uses. And you can see within our payable accounts, we have our work in process account. So if you wanted to customize your chart of accounts, you could change that number to something more appropriate or in line with your current accounting um, nomenclature, but I always recommend don't change that after utilizing Design Manager for any period of time. Uh, if you need to do so, please contact our technical support staff at support at designmanager.com and they'll walk you through any issues that may arise. In the professional platform, for our pro users out there, you access your company information window in the exact same way. File, company information and settings, other accounts, and there's our work in process account. So, why is work in process considered an asset? Well, the best way to answer that question is to ask ourselves another. How does activity get in to the work in process account? Well, in accrual accounting, which is the recommended accounting model for interior design firms and the model that Design Manager utilizes, when you record the invoice from your vendor, the cost of those goods or services for the specific project are recorded into the work in process account. The vendor invoice is the physical, fiscal, and conceptual representation of the transfer of ownerships of the goods or services from the vendor to your company. With that explanation, work in process can be conceptualized as project-related inventory, 
in that our company actually owns the purchased wares until we ultimately sell them to the client. Think about it as goods earmarked for a project already. Now, analogous to the vendor invoice representing the transfer of ownership from the products to the vendor to our company, the act of creating a client invoice for the goods and services represents the client taking physical and fiscal possession of those goods. So the accrual accounting model is really predicated on the concept of the invoice, the vendor invoice to us, and our client invoice that we send to our clients. Most importantly, by holding the cost in work in process, we synchronize the accrual of the cost of goods sold and revenue to the moment of creating the client invoice, so we don't have these wildly fluctuating net income from month to month. As you can imagine, the bills from the vendors generally come in prior to invoicing the client. So in those early months, we're going to be, we would be accruing all of these costs and having very low or even negative net income. And then as the project progresses, we'll start invoicing the client for all the goods and services. Now, since there's no corresponding costs at that moment, we'd have these giant net incomes. So our income statement would have these huge fluctuations. But accrual accounting allows us to synchronize that. So the second that we make the client invoice, we incur both the cost and the revenue at the same time, amongst some other things as well, of course. Let's use some concrete examples to make some of that conceptual discussion a little bit more concrete. Let's go to our documents and accounting. We'll check out our Hilson project. And we have a one current open purchase order. Look at our status. We can see our purchase order is for dining room table and some chairs. Fantastic. Now I can see right away that I have not yet recorded any invoices for these goods yet from the vendor as our vendor invoice column and vendor invoice number column are all blank. And further, if we look at the status of a singular component, we can see that we have no actual cost either. All of that indicates to me immediately that we have not yet recorded any bills from the vendor for these goods. So let's go ahead and do so. We'll keep our purchase order highlighted, click our vendor invoice button, and that brings us to our vendor invoice uh, window. And most of the information is already filled in for us. We'll just quickly and enter the rest. Let's put in a fictional invoice number. We'll use today's date as the invoice date. Transaction description. Cost will go to WIP. And we can see if we look at the total of all of our cost on invoices for the merchandise and the associated freight, uh, the bill from the vendor is $4,200 all of which will be going into work in process. I click OK. We've made our vendor invoice. Now notice, work in process doesn't care whatsoever whether or not I've actually paid this vendor invoice. In this case, I certainly have not. I would still need to write a check or otherwise indicate payment for the goods. It's the act of recording the vendor invoice itself that puts it into work in process, regardless of whether or not that bill has been paid in full. A very important uh, concept to remember. And now if we look at our balance sheet, we can see that our work in process is now $8,326 when it was 4126 so that $4,200 went right into work and process as we would imagine. Fantastic. We can also conveniently see that balance if we go to our chart of accounts, go down to our work and process account, and look at our balances, and we can see in our current fiscal period, there's our $4,200 of cost in our work and process account. Okay, so we can see how activity naturally gets into the work and process account, but how does the cost of the dining uh, table and chairs come out of work and process? As I said before, upon invoicing the client for those items, the cost is gonna transfer out of work and process. So let's see how that works. 
So now we're going to create a client invoice for the Hilsons. Click on our client invoice button. I'll sort this by reference number by clicking the column heading. And there are our first two items for the table and the chairs. We'll select each. Today's date is just fine. Transaction description. Cost will leave. Whip. If we click OK, we can preview and print our invoice. There it is. Now again, these are showing prices, not our costs, of course. Everything looks uh, acceptable to me, so I'll go ahead and close and accept to process. And there's our client invoice. And of course, we would send this off to the Hilsons. Now that moment of making that invoice, several things happen. We have our revenue, the price of the goods that we sold to the Hilsons. We accrue any sales tax necessary. If we had a deposit associated with them from the client, that would get alleviated and reduce the balance due. And of course, to today's discussion, we're moving that cost out of work and process into another set of accounts. And if we look at our balance sheet, again, we can now see that our work in process has once again reduced down to the original 4126. We can see how it has now been reduced by that 4200. And again, on our account glossary, we can now see for the current month that it's quote unquote a wash. We put cost into the work in process account and taking it out by making that client invoice. Great, so our work in process activity has been relieved, but where did the cost of the table and chairs ultimately go? Well, upon invoicing the client for those goods, the cost goes out of work in process into the appropriate cost of goods sold account, or COGS, as you may have heard uh, spoken in the um, a more colloquial term. So how do we determine what account is the appropriate cost of goods sold account? This is an intricate question, so let's review how Design Manager determines that. Close down some of our reports here. Which cost of goods sold account is utilized is determined by the combination of several things. The sales category of the item, the component type, and, if necessary, the company default cost of goods sold accounts. Let's hop over to the professional platform for this part of the discussion, as the mechanisms are entirely the same. Let's go to our specifications for our Hilson project. Let's add a new item. Let's say we have a one of my favorites, a custom sofa. The sales category, as we can see on the item window, this allows us to categorize or classify the good or service that we're providing to the client. So ultimately, we can run reports or answer questions as to how much in, uh, accessories did we sell this year, or what was my total cost on window treatments. If we look at our sales category glossary, and let's choose furniture for our custom sofa, more relevant to today's discussion, the sales category has another very important characteristic. If we edit our furniture sales category, we can see that each sales category has the series of sales or revenue and cost of goods sold accounts associated with it, one for each of our component types, merchandise, freight, crating, etc. So in our case with our custom sofa, since we're classifying, we'd be classifying the component as merchandise, we would use the 51900 furniture cost of goods sold account. Any freight associated with our custom sofa, however, would go into a generic 5900 freight cost of goods sold account. So we'll select that as our sales category. And let's say we added some merchandise. How about $1,800? And we could even add some freight for 200. 
and there we go. So our $1,800 of cost upon uh, invoicing the client of the merchandise would go into the furniture cost of goods sold account, while the 200 of freight would go into the freight cost of goods sold account at 59,000. So sales category, two very important uses, being able to uh, answer questions of profitability and sales and costs, et cetera, but also acting as a liaison to uh, appropriately have the proper revenue and cost of goods sold associated with various items. Well, what if we don't use a sales category? Design managers still must transfer the cost into some cost of goods sold account. So in this case, we're going to refer back to our company information window. And specifically on that window, the default cost of goods sold accounts. So as you can see here, another set of our six different accounts, one for each component type. So if I neglect or choose not to use a sales category on an item, upon receiving the bill from the vendor and then having an invoice to the client, all of those costs will go into furniture. For example, I may have a window treatment that I'm selling to one of my clients. If I don't put a sales category on there, the cost of that is going to go into the furniture cost of goods sold account rather than something more uh, logical or intuitive like a window treatment um, cost of goods sold account. So we have to have default accounts there, but they're also very generic. And for our Design Manager Cloud users, again, you access your company information window by file company and we can see our cost of goods sold accounts here as well. Again, the mechanism in the two platforms is nearly identical. Now, Design Manager can be configured to force a user to use sales categories. And to do so, on your company information window, you want to click your advanced button, general, and you can select the require sales category option. This is going to force all the users to enter in a sales category. And likewise up for our professional users, on our company window, advanced, general, require sales categories. Now I generally recommend to use this option. Unless your accounting professional wants a very basic income statement with just a few cost of goods uh, sold and revenue accounts, such as very simply merchandise, or freight, or, uh, or markup, very simplistic uh, income statement. If you want to see exactly how much furniture, flooring, lighting, window treatments, etc., that you've sold and you want to see that indicated on your in income statement, you're going to need to use the proper sales categories to do so consistently. And using the require sales category option is going to force the users to uh, input a sales category, which is going to greatly help in this cause. For more information on sales categories, component types, uh, default general ledger accounts, be sure to review our discussion on sales categories on our YouTube account. And you can have a nice 40-minute discussion, uh, or you can review a 40-minute discussion of all of those topics at length. Okay, next. So how can we quickly determine what particular specifications are currently residing in work in process? For what project have they been purchased? Uh, what cost of goods sold account will they ultimately affect upon invoicing the client? Those questions bring us to the extremely important work in process report. And this is one of the five monthly reports that we suggest to be reviewed uh, frequently, at least monthly, if not uh, more so. A full discussion of these reports can be uh, reviewed with the five monthly reports to review webinar on our YouTube channel. A very important um, or very uh, informative report about five different reports that, uh, when properly monitored and uh, kept in check or reconciled, will almost guarantee that you're having the appropriate accounting flowing through your design manager. 
So let's hop back over to Design Manager, and we'll go ahead and run our work in process report. It's located under your accounts payable reports, right near the bottom, work in process. Again, I've already added it to my favorites so we can access it easily. Let's go ahead and take a look. On the work in process report, we have several options. First, as of what fiscal period or, fis or uh, what fiscal month. It's going to default to the current fiscal period, but you can run the report retroactively. Uh, it's now is uh, nearing the end of tax time. Let's say the accounting professional wanted uh, more detail on what is in our work in process account as of the end of fiscal 2016. You can run the report as of that date very easily. The project range, if you want to narrow down the scope of the report to see just what uh, particular work in process is uh, applicable for an individual project or projects, you could do so. You can subtotal or group the report in two mechanisms. The default is by project. So the report will be run, grouping all the specifications first by project, and then showing which account, uh, which cost of goods sold account they're going to be associated with. For a more accounting perspective, you could group the report or subtotal report by account first, and then projects within that account. So you could see um, the total for all of the furniture cost of goods sold, freight cost of goods sold, uh, window treatments, et cetera, and which projects have specifications within them. I generally prefer the project method unless I'm trying to review particular accounts as a whole. Whether or not to show the full description of each of the components, um, doing so, of course, will make the report longer, and whether or not to show revisions. Now, revisions will show us how particular specifications uh, became displayed on the work in process report, why it's currently in work in process, uh, and this is something we're going to just explore a little bit more deeply on another topic uh, very soon. Let's go ahead and print the work in process report. Let's make that a bit larger for everyone. And here we go. And if we look at the layout of the report, we can see first, we're again, grouping and subtotaling by project. Within the project, we're listing the future costs of goods sold accounts to which the cost will uh, ultimately be residing upon invoicing the client. The project, uh, the item reference number, uh, the specification reference number, the first four are the item. The next three are the component within the item, the description of the component, the vendor invoice transaction that placed the cost into work in process, the vendor code, vendor invoice number, vendor invoice date, purchase order number where applicable, the component type, and the cost itself. Besides being a conceptual representation of the, the account balance of our work in process account. What else does this report really show us, or why is the work in process report important? Many reasons. One, are you invoicing your clients properly? Maybe you've uh, gotten a 100% deposit from the client or uh, a more than sufficient retainer and never actually invoiced the client for the goods and services which of course does have more implications than uh, just alleviating WIP, perhaps you just simply missed an item to invoice. The work in process would catch that item so you do invoice it to the client appropriately. Two, maybe there are, um, another example would be, let's say there's two items in your specifications that were inadvertently created for the same physical merchandise and one ultimately gets invoiced to the client while the other has a purchase order and vendor invoice recorded against it, which we have seen many, many times. Now, in that case, you would need to invoice the client for the item that has the vendor invoice uh, recorded against it in order to move that cost into cost of goods sold. Otherwise, you're going to be keeping that cost on your work and process and ultimately overstating your income, your taxable income, remember. So along with the pre-billing report, the work in process report is a very important tool in monitoring overall proper invoicing to your client. Let's review some of the examples that we have on our work in process report. Let's begin at the Hilsons. Now, 
all of this merchandise is uh, still need to be installed, so those components should naturally be in work and processes until we invoice the Hilsons for them. So they're absolutely fine. That's a very important point. Work in process is not a uh, scary or negative term. It's a fantastic uh, accounting tool. If just because there's activity in your work in process account actually means you're um, maintaining business and you have um, items to ultimately invoice to the client, which is generally a good thing. It's only when there's entries in work in process that are have been there for quite some time or out of date that need to be handled is when uh, work in process can become a little bit more of a, a topic to discuss. Okay, how about the Carter's Brigantine Beach Home? Well, the wall treatment here is not yet installed, so that, just like the Hilson's goods, should, should be on our work in process report. But this restocking fee for the return fabric, well, that came after we invoiced the Carters for the original pillows themselves. So we're going to need to make another invoice to get the, that uh, cost back or recompensed for those costs um, for the restocking fee. So how do we do so? Well, we're just going to make an invoice. So go over to our documents and counting. Make an invoice for the Carters Brigantine Beach Home. And here is our item three, which is our pillows. And we can see the only portion we're looking for is that restocking fee. And notice this is the price. This is going to include uh, our markup on that restocking fee. Today's date is just fine. Transaction description, restocking fee for original fabric. Click OK. Print and accept our invoice. There's the pillows, the restocking fee alone. Fantastic. And now, if we reprint our work in process report, just like that, the restocking fee for the pillows has dropped out of the Carter's work in process and reduced our total work in process by that $35. And if we look at our transaction search window, let's look at just that invoice that we created. We can see all the actual accounting that went on there. Well, here is our revenue $45 that we charged the, um, the Carters for. There's our sales tax. And here is us crediting or reducing, in the case of an asset account, our work in process, and debiting or increasing our 51100 accessories uh, cost, of, cost of goods sold account, along with accounts receivable and a few other things as well. So this is us clearing the cost from work in process and putting it into the appropriate cost of goods sold account. Let's take a look. Our final project on our work in process is the Carter's Pennington home. Mm -hmm. There's a few issues here. Let's say that uh, we don't want to actually invoice or charge the Carters for the, uh, the rush charge on the fabric. Uh, perhaps that was our error, the vendor's error, etc. Well, we can't leave that cost in work in process because we're leaving cost on the table. We're, we're, our net income is going to be overstated by that cost until we move it into cost of goods sold. Very important. So we want to push that cost out of work in process and at least reduce our net income as appropriate. So how do we do that? Well, mechanism is the exact same. Back to our documents and accounting. Now we'll go up to the Carter's Pennington home. And here is the window treatment, which we've invoiced in full for, except for the freight that is becoming, um, is looking to be invoiced to the client for that rush charge. Well, we're not going to charge them the 6050. So what we need to do now is Use the override function for the window treatment item. 
That gets us to the override invoice price window. Click the override option to acknowledge that we're taking control of how much we're invoicing the client for within Design Manager. And we're going to make the price to invoice and the taxable amount zero. Click OK. We can notice that now the item is in override mode and we have no invoice price whatsoever. So we'll select our window treatment, transaction description, clear rush charge from WIP. I always double check to make sure my tolls are all zero, no price, sales tax, deposit, et cetera, or my balance due is zero. And I click OK. So I can print out a document, at least for my records. And I accept. And now, if we rerun our work and process report, our rush charge is cleared. And again, our work and process is continuing to be reduced. And if we look on our chart of accounts, here's our freight cost of goods sold account look at our balances, we can see within the third month we're putting in that rush charge. And we can see even further detail of that by using our reports, general ledger reports, account inquiry, put in our freight account for this fiscal month, and notice here is us increasing or debiting our 5,900 freight account by our rush charge to clear the work in process. So that's us in incurring the cost even though we're not invoicing the client for the cost for, uh, itself. So we're keeping our net income appropriate and yet clearing out our work in process. Now let's see, lastly we have our stone table. Now this has actually been returned to the vendor and uh, was refunded less a restocking fee. In fact, the original client has been credited. Let's move over to the professional platform to explore this one in a bit more detail. Here, we'll go to our accounting, accounts payable reports, and again, there's our work in process but I've attached it to our favorites side of the report window here as well. But in this case, I want to use a specialized version of the work in process. I want to use the work in process history report because this is going to provide me a chronology of why or why not a particular uh, specification is in the work in process account. And we'll run that report just for our stone table in question, which is item 17. The columns are nearly identical to our standard work in process uh, report, but we have a few extra pieces of information. We can see whether or not the uh, piece would have been removed from work in process with the closed fiscal month. It's going to show us the current work in process, could be zero in the case of an item that's cleared from WIP, but it also has a work in process revision description. That is the same information that will be shown on the work in process report if we selected the show revision option as we saw a little while back. And each of these transactions, this description gets longer and longer as various fiscal activities occur upon the specification. So we created a new vendor invoice. We removed the cost from work in process by a client invoice. We then credited the client invoice, which quote unquote reopened or put the cost back into work in process. So a very specific lineage automatically gets recorded in Design Manager for your reference. So why is this cost still in work in process? Well, let's take a look and see why. Let's go to our specifications, 
for our Carter project, let's take a look at that item 17. So if we look at the two status tabs for both the item and component windows, we can see exactly why this cost is quote unquote trapped in work and process. We can see originally on the component order status, here is us creating or inputting the original vendor invoice. That's going to put that 650 of cost into work and process. We then, looking at the item status, can see that we invoice the client, which would take it out of work and process as we saw on our revision description. Then, however, The first, the next step we make is putting in the credit or the refund from the vendor. Well, this does nothing to work in process because technically design manager is going to consider that this has been cleared. So that minus 550 is just going to pass through. And then we ultimately end up invoicing the client, which again does nothing to take out that cost from work in process. Here is a very handy um, rule from our discussion today and if anything you take from this discussion pay heed to this <clears throat> when there's a quote unquote double refund i.e. from the vendor and uh, to the client for a particular piece we want to reverse the transactions in the reverse order they were entered well that sounds like double talk what do I mean by that if we first record the vendor invoice for the good, which is the general norm, we then invoice the client. To back out each of those transactions, do them in the reverse order. So the next step would not be to put in a, a negative vendor invoice. Rather, we credit the client invoice and then put in the refund from the vendor. So it would go vendor invoice, client invoice, credit client invoice, credit vendor invoice. That step, um, that order will guarantee that your work in process will behave as imagined. But now that we're in this pickle, we need to get that cost out of work in process. How do we do so? Well, we've already done. We're going to create a, what we call a design manager, a zero balanced invoice to push that cost back into cost of goods sold, which in the professional platform, we don't do under our accounting, Accounts Receivable Frame, Client Invoices, click our Add Invoice button, input the project in question. Here we can see our stone table, but I do not want to invoice the client again for 845. I want to make that zero balance invoice to just simply push the cost through. So again, I'm going to use my override function, very similar to Design Manager Cloud. Click the override. change my price to invoice and taxable amount both to zero. Click OK, select or tag the stone table, and I always double check. Zero on price, sales tax, deposit, etc. Click OK. From the professional platform, I want to print and post. All zeros, just exactly as I'd imagine. And by accepting, all we're doing is pouring that 650 out of work and process back into costs of goods sold, as we should. So now let's think about maybe there are times when I don't want to use work in process or I want to go directly into cost of goods sold. Design Manager can handle those specialized um, circumstances as well. For one, if we look on our vendor invoice window, we can see for each of the items that we can have an option for bypassing work in process. What this would do is tell Design Manager, for this particular transaction, do not put the cost into work in process. I want you to go directly to cost of goods sold. 
very handy. And let's see, explore how that works. For one, operating expenses. Now in both Design Manager Cloud and Design Manager Professional Cloud, you can input operating expenses and join them or refer them back to individual projects. We call them project-related expenses. And you can see on our vendor invoice distribution window, by default, it's non-project. In other words, it's company expenses. But the project-related option changes our window and allows us to input what project we want to go to, what item, et cetera. But we also have an ability to, again, bypass work in process. Let's imagine that, um, again, we had our, our rush charge, our shipping charge from the vendor uh, that we were just uh, working with a little while back. When inputting that rush charge, had I selected bypass work in process, it would never have gone on the WIP report, and it would have gone directly into freight. A very convenient feature when you know how to use so. So you don't have to uh, worry about all of these additional charges or um, you know uh, supplemental charges coming through and then being uh, remaining on your work and process report. This way, you have control over whether or not it will show there. Design Manager actually will set certain items into bypass work and process. In fact, it's uh, intuitive enough, the program uh, intrinsically will look to see if an item has already been invoiced to the client and will default that bypass work and process option for you. So if we look at an example in that case, let's use purchase order that I know. Now, I have not yet invoiced this uh, I've not yet recorded any bills from the vendor for this purchase order. How do I know? Well, two reasons. I can see that my cost to date is zero, and I have no other information about it. But I do know that this item is invoiced to the client. If we take a look at um, the Carter's project again, item seven has been invoiced, but I had not yet recorded the bill from the vendor. If we look again at our account distribution window, notice Design Manager is already using the bypass work and process for us. It's trying to intuitively push those costs through because we're usually not going to invoice the client again for these goods, so Design Manager will do so. So in that case, simply by leaving Design Manager to its own devices, the cost won't even go into work and process. It'll go directly into the appropriate cost of goods sold. There's another way, or a few other ways, to bypass work in process. You can bypass work in process for an entire project. In that case, under the project window, default tab, advanced markup, there's an option for bypass work in process. Note, this would be very unusual and is not the intended um, accounting flow that Design Manager utilize, uh, utilizes. This would only be applicable in cases where um, you may have a model home, for example, where um, the, the individual pieces themselves will never be invoiced to the client. They'll simply be a, um, a pre-set, uh, predetermined terms that we'll be invoicing the client for or the developer for. And each of the pieces that we're using to uh, stage the home will not get invoiced, so we don't want them in our work in process. That would be a, a very concrete example. But in general, you would not be using the bypass work and process option except for some rarefied cases. More, much more commonly, on a particular item, I might want to bypass the work in process for a single item, and I can do so. On the status tab, I have a bypass work in process option here. A common example that I've seen would be, I might not be itemizing freight for a particular project. I may have the terms at the onset of the project where I'm simply going to charge a percentage of the total project. 
So let's say the scope of the project is uh, 100,000. I've agreed to charge uh, no more than $10,000 in a freight. So in those cases, I may have a single item, freight for project. And I would attach all of my freight bills into this one single item. And by having it set to bypass WIP, I would never worry that the costs of those freight are going to be sitting in my work in process. They're going to go right into cost of goods sold, as I'm never going to be invoicing the client specifically for this particular item. So that's an example, and there are others where you may want to use the individual bypass work in process item. Now note that setting is not retroactive. If an item is already on your work in process report, simply by coming and selecting bypass work in process does not drop it off the report. You still need to go through the procedure of creating that uh, client invoice for it, even if it's a zero balance invoice that we have seen already. And with that, that brings us to the end of our discussion today. Uh, in conclusion, work in process is a fundamental fund foundation of our accrual accounting. Uh, that really synchronizes the increase in cost of goods sold and revenue for the reselling of the goods and services at the point we made the client invoice. So we tried to discuss the concept of work and process in depth of both the accounting and practice in Design Manager. We reviewed work and process report and the work and process history report uh, showing examples how we remove entries from those reports if necessary. And I even finalized or concluded the discussion with a few instances where using the bypass work and process option may be applicable throughout the system. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today, and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon.